everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Alex and today I'm going to be bringing you my November TBR, kind of. Now my TBR this month is going to be a little bit different than what I usually do. I'm going to be participating in a TBR jar challenge with the Weeby Book and Book Club, which is hosted by Jacqueline over at Weebly Book and I will leave a link to her channel down below. If you don't watch her yet, go follow her because she is just incredible. She's always so thorough and entertaining and her videos are just great. She reads a lot of thrillers, so if you are like thrillers or you want some thriller recommendations, definitely go check out her channel. So essentially the way that this challenge is going to work is that everyone that's doing the challenge is going to come up with a number of books that they want to read in November. So for me, I'm planning to read 10 books in the month of November. Then you have to come up with a list of books that is double that number of books. So I have a list of 20 potential reads. Then finally, everybody is going to be paired up with somebody else and your partner is going to select however many books you want to read from your list. So once I get assigned a partner, I will give them my list of 20 books. They will pick 10 books off of that list for me to put into a TBR jar. Then throughout the month of November, I will be pulling those books out of the jar and that is going to determine what I read in the month of November. So I probably won't be doing updates as I pick each book on YouTube. You guys will obviously hear what I wind up reading in my mid-month and end of the month wrap-ups, but if you want to know in real time what I'm going to be reading, I probably will post my TBR jar pulls on Instagram. So if you want to know in real time what I'm going to be reading, you want to watch me pull out of the jar, follow me on Instagram. Link is down below as always and that is where you'll get to see in real time what I pick. So today I'm going to be sharing with you my list of 20 books that I'm going to be giving to my partner. They're going to pick 10 books off the list and I'll go through them one by one throughout the month. So 10 of the books in this pile I will be reading in November. Which 10? Who knows. If I wind up finishing all 10, maybe I'll go back and pick some of the other ones. I usually read 12-ish books in a month, but I'm trying to take it a little bit easier on myself in November. Things are getting a little bit busy trying to prep for the end of the year. So we're keeping it a little bit short, but we're going to go with 10. So today I'm going to talk about the 20 potential books that I'm going to be reading in November. Before we get started, if you are new here and you're not already, be sure to go down and hit the subscribe button as well as the bell icon so that you never miss out on any of my content. And without further ado, let's get started. So I'm going to start out first talking about the books that I don't own and then at the end of the video I'll talk about the books that I do own. So the first book on this list, and no surprise to anyone, is The Toll by Neil Shusterman. This is the third and final book in the Scythe trilogy and it comes out on November 5th. This is a book that even if I don't wind up getting it in my TBR jar, I am going to be reading it in the month of November somehow, some way it's going to happen. I've been waiting for this book ever since I finished Thunderhead in the middle of last year. Obviously I can't give too much of a synopsis since this is the finale to a trilogy, but I feel like most people know what the Scythe series is about already. This is a highly, highly anticipated release for a ton of people and I cannot wait to see how this series wraps up. If you've never heard of the Scythe series before, it essentially takes place in this utopian world where we have conquered death. There are no more diseases, there's no more famine, there's no more car accidents, natural disasters, nothing that can kill anybody. Everybody is essentially immortal. So now humanity has come up with these people called Scythes who are responsible for population control and they are the ones that are responsible for killing. So in the first book, we follow our two main characters, Citra and Rowan, who are going to become Scythe apprentices. And at the end of the novel, one of them will become a full-time Scythe. This is one of my absolute favorite series of all time. I, like I said, have been highly, highly anticipating the toll for a year and a half now, and I cannot wait to see what happens. The other new release that I'm planning to read in November is The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. And this one's set to come out on November 5th as well. I don't know a whole lot about this one either, but I'm just going to read you the first line of the Goodreads synopsis because I feel like it sums up the vibe of this book. It says, From the New York Times bestselling author of The Night Circus, a timeless love story set in a secret underground world, a place of pirates, painters, lovers, liars, and ships that sail upon a starless sea. So I really don't want to know a whole lot going into this. I just know that I trust Erin Morgenstern. The Night Circus is one of my favorite books of all time. I've been waiting for her to release something new and I'm so, so glad that she finally is. So I don't want to know much more than that little brief blurb that I gave you. Either way, I'm excited. The next book that I have on my list is Pride by Evie Zuboy. Again, don't know too, too much about this one and I kind of want to keep it that way. I just know that it is a remix of Pride and Prejudice, which I finally read a couple months ago and really, really enjoyed. So now I can finally get to this one. I've heard nothing but great things about this book and Evie's a Boy in general, so I'm really excited to see what it holds. The next book on my list is actually going to be a reread, and that is Far From the Tree by Robin Benway. Now, I have been wanting to reread Far From the Tree all year long, and it just hasn't happened. I've gotten involved in other new books that I want to read, but I would really love to revisit Far From the Tree and get back into that world because I just miss it, and it's just such a good story. If you haven't heard me talk about Far From the Tree before, it is about three siblings who were separated at birth. Two of them were adopted into different families, and the 
other sibling has been in the foster system for his entire life and they all eventually find their way back to each other, learn about each other for the first time, and then go on a mission to find their birth mother. Now Far From the Tree was my favorite book of all time up until I read With the Fire on High earlier this year. I absolutely adore this story. Robin Benway is such a talented author. I feel like this is a hard-hitting contemporary that is happy and sad and everything that you want it to be and I just really am excited to get back into this story. Next on my list is A Curse So Dark and Lonely by Bridget Kimmerer. Again, don't know too, too much about this one, but I do know that it is a Beauty and the Beast retelling that features a character with cerebral palsy, and I believe that it, I don't know if it's fully set in our world or if it's maybe kind of half in, half out magical realism kind of thing. Regardless, I have heard absolutely nothing but great reviews about this novel, and I know that there's a sequel coming out very, very soon. This has been on my radar for quite a while now. I haven't picked it up because it is pretty chunky, but I'm hoping that I will really enjoy it if it gets picked this month. The next book on my list is Frankly in Love by David Yoon. Now I did start this book back probably a month or so ago now and I just had to return to the library which is why I didn't finish it but I'm hoping to be able to pick it back up and see it all the way through. Frankly in Love follows our main character Frank who is a Korean American boy and his parents have told him his whole life that he is not allowed to date any girl that is not Korean. Well of course Frank falls for an American girl but he knows that his parents will never approve. One of Frank's female friends actually is in the same situation as him. She is not allowed to date anyone that is not Korean but she has an American and boyfriend. So Frank and his friend decide to fake date so that they can please their parents while also actually dating the people that they want to date, but then Frank finds himself falling for this Korean girl as well. From what I've read of this book so far, I've really, really enjoyed it. David Yoon has a very specific and distinct writing style. It's really quirky and fun and funny, so I'm hoping that that's kind of the vibe that will take us all the way through the book. I think that it's going to be a really, really good read once I finish it. Next on my list is The 10,000 Doors of January by Alex E. Harrow. Again, don't know too much about this one either. I will read you the Goodreads synopsis because it's relatively short, but I've just heard again nothing but fantastic things about this one. It has been all over booktube lately and it's really intriguing to me, so I'm just going to read you the short synopsis. In a sprawling mansion filled with peculiar treasures, the January Scholar is a curiosity herself. As the ward of the wealthy Mr. Locke, she feels a little different from the artifacts that decorate the halls, carefully maintained, largely ignored, and utterly out of place. Then she finds a strange book, a book that carries the scent of other worlds and tells a tale of secret doors of love, adventure, and danger. Each page turn reveals impossible truths about the world and January discovers a story increasingly entwined with her own. So that just sounds mysterious and eerie and fantastical and whimsical and just the right combination of what I feel like I need this month. Next on my list is An American Marriage by Tayari Jones. This is another one that I did start earlier this year, actually just a month or two ago, and I enjoyed what I read of it, but I just had to put it down because I had other books that I was reading, but I'm hoping to dive back in. This essentially follows a newlywed couple, Celestial and Roy, and right when they are starting to get their life together and starting to build this brand new life, Roy gets arrested for a crime that he did not commit. And I think it basically just covers how that is affecting their marriage. I think it might follow him after he gets out and what is happening to them. Again, I didn't get very far into this. I really enjoyed the part that I did read, but I'm hoping to be able to see it all the way through. Next on my list is Tweet Cute by Emma Lord. This is actually an e-arc that I received through NetGalley and it's due to publish in January of 2020. This novel follows their two main characters, Pepper and Jack, and both of their families own restaurants and there comes to be this scandal. I think that one restaurant is accused of stealing a recipe from the other restaurant. So Pepper and Jack wind up getting in this Twitter war that goes viral and people start shipping them and I think inevitably a romance happens. I'm not sure if this is the debut from this author or not, but regardless, this just sounds like a fun, funny, whimsical contemporary that is going to be the perfect thing to put into this heavy season of fantasy and historical fiction. Next on my list is After I Do by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This book follows our two main characters, Lauren and Ryan, and they are married, but their marriage is starting to fail. They have done pretty much everything they can think of, but it seems that they are inevitably headed towards a divorce. They decide to do one big last ditch effort to try to stay together. They agree to take a year apart from each other to try to find themselves and then discover what they actually want in life and in marriage and then come back together at the end of that year and see what they think. But the one rule is that they absolutely cannot contact each other throughout this year that they are apart. Now I adore Taylor Jenkins Reid. I've read three books by her so far and I have loved every single one of them. And I also added After I Do to my newest five star predictions video so I'm hoping to go ahead and get it read and hopefully I can do that in November. The next one I'm planning to read is All the Ugly and Wonderful Things by Bryn Greenwood. 
Now, this is one that, again, I know nothing about and I don't want to know anything about because I've heard from multiple people that it's best to go into this completely blind. I just know that it is a very hard-hitting and very heavy contemporary and not for sensitive people. So I really enjoy hard-hitting contemporaries. I think that I might have a slight idea about what this is about, but I don't want to say anything in case A, I'm wrong, or B, I don't want to spoil it for anybody else. So just know this is on my list as well. Next, I have From Twinkle With Love by Sandy Menon. This is the story of our main character Twinkle who is an aspiring filmmaker and she has a crush on this boy and I believe that she also starts to develop a crush on his twin brother as well and we get to hear the story of this love triangle through the letters that Twinkle is writing to her favorite female filmmaker. I haven't heard about this one in quite a while. It was big when it first came out and then the hype kind of died down. Sandy Manon has put out other works since this, but I've only read her first novel, When Devil Met Rishi, and I really, really loved that one. So I'm hoping that I can get to this one as well. When Devil Met Rishi was just really light and fun and just exactly what I needed and wanted out of a cutesy contemporary, and I'm hoping that this will be the same. And last for the books that I don't own is Us Against You by Frederick Bachman. Now I mentioned in my end of the year book tag video that I want to read this one to hopefully be able to film a backlist breakdown for you guys in December. So if I do get this one, be looking out for that in December. But this is the second and final book to the Beartown duology. If you don't know what Beartown is about, it basically follows a hockey town and the, everybody's hopes and dreams are pinned on this youth hockey team. But one day one of the girls in the town accuses someone on the hockey team of rape and it divides the entire town. Us Against You is a direct sequel, so it obviously follows the consequences of that and wraps up the storyline. I've heard great things about this duology and this book in general, so I'm hoping that I'll get it this month. Now I am hoping to get some books off of my physical shelf, so I have quite a few here that I actually physically own that are going to be going onto my list as well. So the first one on my list that I own is Three Dark Crowns by Kendar Blake, and this is the first book in the Three Dark Crowns series. It takes place in a world where there are these triplet sisters who, after they're born, they are each raised in a different section of the country. They each have a specific power that they are raised to try to hone. And then when they all turn 16, they essentially fight to the death for the throne. Now I've had this on my shelf for a while now. The premise really, really intrigues me and I've heard incredible reviews about the series. I know that it just wrapped up. I think there are four, either four or five books out in the series and they just published the last one. So I'm hoping to go ahead and get this one off my shelf. That way I can continue on. Next on my list would be another reread and that is Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. Now this is a literary fiction-esque post-apocalyptic novel that follows this Shakespeare troupe that is roaming around after the apocalypse and performing for people. This was a very, very hyped book back a few years ago and a lot of people still claim that it's one of their favorite books of all time. It is definitely one of my favorites of all time, but it's been way, way too long since I've read it and I've been wanting to give it another go, so hopefully I can do that in November. Next on my list, I've got Eleanor Oliphant is Completely Fine by Gail Honeyman. Now this was also in my end of the year book tag and my five star predictions video. This is essentially about a woman named Eleanor Oliphant who ha has her life the way that she likes it. She's pretty socially awkward, but she doesn't really seem to notice or mind. But she winds up falling for the IT guy at her company and chaos ensues. She learns that there's more to life, yada, yada, yada. I've heard this compared to a man called Uwe, and it's also been compared to Sassafras, which I read earlier this year and really enjoyed as well. And also from the synopsis, I would compare it to The Bookish Life of Nina Hill. I highly, highly enjoyed it, so I'm hoping this will be the same. The next book on my list is On the Come Up by Angie Thomas. Now I have read The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas, absolutely loved it, one of the best audiobooks that I've ever listened to, easy five out of five stars. I was really excited for On the Come Up and somehow it has slipped me by all this time. So this novel follows our main character Bree. And Bree's father was an underground rap star who died right before he hit it big, so Bree feels like she's got some incredibly big shoes to fill and I think that it just follows her journey. I remember back quite a while ago now, I posted this on Instagram along with a couple other books asking which one I should read next and everybody said on the come up, on the come up, but I didn't end up getting to it then. Really, really hoping to get to it in November and if I don't wind up getting to it in November, hopefully December. Next on my list is Emergency Contact by Mary H.K. Choi. This book follows the two main characters, Penny and Sam, who are both kind of stuck in life, don't really know where they want to go, but they wind up meeting, exchanging phone numbers, and developing a friendship and relationship through text message. This is one that has really been on my radar for a while now. Mary H.K. Choi now has two books out, both of which I own and I'm hoping to read, but I want to read them in publication order. I've featured this in a lot of videos and always talk about how much I want to read it, so hopefully this will finally be the month that I can do that. Next on my list, I've got More Happy Than Not by Adam Silvera. 
This book follows our main character, Aaron, and Aaron has a girlfriend, but he is starting to think that he may be developing feelings for a male friend of his. And in this world, there is this process called the Lateo procedure that you can undergo to have some memories taken away from you. So Aaron is considering undergoing the Lateo procedure to make himself essentially forget that he is gay. I have really enjoyed Adam Silvera's work in the past and I'm really, really interested in this one as well. He is another author that I'm hoping to do a backlist breakdown on as well in the future. So this is just one that I need to check off my list. I own it, have owned it for probably at least a year now. Haven't gotten to it yet. So hopefully I'll get to it in November. And the last book that I'm gonna be featuring in this video is Smothered by Autumn Chiklis. This book follows our main character, Lou, and Lou is just graduating from college, but she has no job, no prospects, and nowhere to go after she graduates. So she winds up moving back in with her mother, and her mother is absolutely thrilled about this. She is excited to have her daughter back in the house and have someone to just do life with, but Lou is obviously not as excited. Now this book is told in an interesting format. There's a combination of like text messages, emails, journal entries, it even says police documents in here. So hopefully this will be just a fun and relatable contemporary. So that is it for my potential November TBR. Like I said, if you want to follow along in real time and see what I actually do wind up picking up in the month of November, follow me on Instagram at underscore hooked on books. Link is in the description as always. So if you have read any of these books and have thoughts on them, please leave them all in the comments down below. You guys know I always love to hear from you down there. As always, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to go give it a big thumbs up as well as hitting the subscribe button and the bell icon down below so that you never miss out on any of my content. So until next time, bye!